Hi friends! Welcome to Storytime Sunday. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these live. That can go off. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these live. Uh, so, welcome back I should say. I've been doing a lot of kind of catch up and reminding everybody of past Storytime Sundays that are up on my YouTube channel, which you guys know, you can always go and check out those older versions of the show on my YouTube. Uh, sorry, I'm starting a little bit late today. We were watching uh, Disney Plus. Not a plug, just saying. <laughs> That's what we were doing. Getting caught up on some Clone Wars. So um, we are starting a little bit late tonight and I apologize for that, but I do wanna give it a few minutes just to make sure that those who want to can join us. And uh, yeah, and those who are joining us late can always watch from the beginning. Anytime, we always upload these right back. As soon as we're done, they go live. So you guys can always watch it back from the beginning if you join us late. But, um, and as always, please feel free to share this link. The more the merrier. And I would love for these live shows to um, have even more people come and watch them live. We have a lot of people who come and watch and post, but um, we'd really like more to join us for our live shows. So feel free to share this. Um, and yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes. And say hi when you join us. Please feel free to say hi, because I would love to see who actually uh, comes and sits in with us and so I can say hi to you and your littles as well. So tonight's book is Douglas by Randy Cecil. I've never read it before, so this is a new one. Um, it's really thick, but there are a lot of pictures in it, so I think that it will be a joyous book for us to, uh, to, to uh, experience together. Again, I literally, the only time I've seen this is when I look through it at the, at the briar patch, so it looked very interesting, and the pictures are all in black and white, so it's a very, very unique book, and it's a really pretty setup, so I figured, hey, why not? Let's, let's try some new stuff on. So, and as you guys know, I'm not a fan of desk covers on books when I'm reading them. So, um, this is one of those books that doesn't have a picture on the actual book. So, I will be showing the picture so you guys can see what the cover looks like um, and the back looks like. It's a very, very nice cover. Nice and sturdy. Um, but we will take off the desk cover when we read the book because it makes life so much easier. I don't have to worry about ripping the dust cover, which I worry about every time I borrow a book from the briar patch. That's my biggest fear, is that I'm going to destroy the beautiful dust cover. And some people do judge books by their covers. So, um, so Douglas by Randy Cecil will go down here and we will enjoy this beautiful, beautiful black book. It does have a little bit of engraving on it. There's a little engraved photo, a little mouse. So, yeah, we'll give it just a few more minutes um, so that people can come and play along and sing and dance and listen to a story. But um bum And the other reason, so you all know, our studio, our lovely, beautiful studio, uh, is located in our basement. So underneath the rest of our house. And we had a little bit of a challenge with the windows. Uh, they were letting in a little too much fresh air. And so it was probably about 20 degrees colder down here than the rest of the house. So the past couple weeks, it's been a bit of a challenge to come down and film because it has been so cold. <laughs> um, so is another reason why we've been rehashing some of our older episodes. So uh, now I think we've got, I think we've got the temperature uh, figured out to a nice, comfortable degree, and uh, we're back to our live shows. So with that, I guess we'll we'll jump right into it. I think we've given everybody a good amount of time to join us, and those who join us late can always go back and watch the show once it's posted live. So. Again, friends, welcome to Storytime Sunday. Back to the live show. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Tonight's book is Douglas, and it is by Randy Cecil.
Ooh, it's an act. Act one. On a Saturday afternoon in Bloomville, Iris Espinoza put on her sister's blue sweater and stepped out the front door. A familiar buttery scent wafted through the air. <gasps> Popcorn. Iris headed down the steps. Do you guys love popcorn? I love popcorn. Iris headed down the steps and made her way along the sidewalk, past the enormous cat with six toes on each paw, past Everett Dunn, whose mother did not allow him to go beyond the stoop alone. to the majestic cinema, where she bought a small box of popcorn from a street vendor and a ticket from the box office. Then she stepped inside. She made her way down the aisle and along the front row to her usual seat. The lights dimmed and the projector started up with a click, click, click. Iris watched the screen, rapt, as her hero leapt and dashed about, narrowly escaping danger at every turn. A few rows back, a little mouse was watching the screen too. But the sight of popcorn falling through the fingers of the woman in the large hat a few seats over pulled the little mouse away. The woman with the large hat came to the cinema every afternoon and to the little mouse's delight, she happened to be very careless with her snacks. Hi Tim, hi Selena. The little mouse danced about, snatching fallen kernels from the air and feasting on one fluffy bite after another until she felt rather queasy. To ease her aching belly, the little mouse took a little walk and she belched a little belch. <laughs> then she hopped up on a cushiony seat to take a nap. To her surprise, a girl in a blue sweater was sitting in the next seat over, smiling at her. The little mouse considered skittering away, but her belly was still rumbling. So she settled down in a soft, cozy fold of the little girl's sweater instead. Hi, Aunt Rebecca. On the screen, the hero was bravely swinging on a vine from one castle window to another, but the little mouse was more interested in a pocket she had discovered above the folds of the little girl's blue sweater. The pocket looked like the softest, coziest place of all, so she climbed inside. Then the little mouse fell asleep. When the little mouse awoke, she poked her head out of the pocket and found that she was outside in the brilliant light of day for the first time in her life. Her eyes widened at the wonder of it all, but then she saw an unsettling sight, an enormous beast with six toes on each paw was sprawled half asleep across a stoop. Uh-oh. Six toes on six toes on each paw. What does that sound like to you? And even more unsettling, the beast woke suddenly and sniffed the air. 
Then it pulled itself up off the stoop and began to follow her. Block after block, the beast lumbered along behind her, watching her and licking its lips. Until finally, to the little mouse's great relief, the girl in the blue sweater climbed a stoop, opened a door, and left the street and the beast behind. When Iris reached her bedroom, she took off her sister's sweater and hung it on the doorknob. Then she sat down on the edge of the bed with the last of her popcorn. But to her surprise, just as she was about to pop the last kernel into her mouth, the little mouse from the cinema poked his head out of the sweater pocket. It leapt to the floor, twitched its nose, and sniffed the air. Then, spotting the kernel of popcorn in Iris's hand, it leapt from the stack of books up onto a stool and over to the bed. The little mouse's daring reminded Iris of her favorite actor, Douglas Fairbanks. So she decided to name the little mouse Douglas. Iris said the name aloud, Douglas, and the little mouse's eyes seemed to sparkle. As Douglas nibbled the last kernel of popcorn, Iris dressed the little mouse in a dashing vest taken from one of her dolls. Then she sat back to admire her work just like Douglas Fairbanks, she thought. Then she heard her sister stomping down the hallway, so she quickly slipped Douglas out of sight. A moment later, the bedroom door swung open and Iris's annoyed sister reclaimed her sweater. The girl exited the apartment was not the same one the six-toed cat had watched earlier, but the blue sweater was the same. And more important, so was the little mouse poking its head out of one of the pockets. So the old six-toed cat picked himself up off the sidewalk and followed them. Block after block, he watched as a little mouse tried to hide deep in the sweater pocket, only to poke its head out again a moment later to see that the six-toed cat was still following. But of course, he was. Adriana Espinosa was meeting her boyfriend's mother, Mrs. Hubbard, for the very first time, and she wanted everything to be perfect. So she checked her hair, then gathered her nerves, whew, and rang the buzzer. Winston opened the door and smiled, and together they made their way up the flight of stairs. A moment later, Adriana was smiling and nodding politely as Winston made introductions. This is going well, thought Adriana as they sat down for a cup of tea in the living room. And then she sneezed. She reached her hand into her sweater pocket, hoping to find a handkerchief. Instead, she felt something furry and whiskery. It wriggled in her hand. Adriana screamed and screamed as she flung the flurry thing, furry thing onto the room. When her head stopped spinning, Douglas found herself high atop high atop a bookcase. She stood, frozen, as all around her, people screamed and teacups rattled. But then a woman wielding a broom charged at her. Douglas sprang into action. She leapt from the bookcase to the curtain and swung on the curtain out the window and onto the ledge. 
Then she shimmied across the ledge to the corner of the building where she pulled herself upward little by little until she reached the roof. <sighs> Exhausted, Douglas collapsed in a tiny heap on the rooftop as her racing heart slowly quieted and her shaking legs slowly stilled. Night began to fall and the first real stars Douglas had ever seen appeared in the sky. She watched as they twinkled, so beautiful yet so impossibly far away. Then she curled up on the hard rooftop and fell into an uneasy sleep. Act Two. If you guys need to pause this and go get some popcorn, I'm okay with that. And now we return to the story of Douglas. As the sun rose over Bloomville the next morning, Douglas awoke and blinked her eyes. Then she climbed to the top of a nearby chimney and looked out over the town. Off in the distance, the majestic cinema sparkled in the morning sun. The cinema, where there were no broom-wielding women or enormous beasts, and popcorn fell like rain. She climbed down the chimney, then skittered to the roof's edge and peered over. The beast was staring back up at her. What the six-toed six cat had lost in quickness over the years, he made up for in patience. And after so many years hunting mice, he knew how they thought. He knew their next moves, even before they did. He knew this little mouse was on the run. The six-toed cat picked himself up off the sidewalk and stretched. Slowly, patiently, he tracked the little mouse as it ran from rooftop to rooftop. Each time he spotted the little mouse, it appeared a little more confident and a little more capable than the last time, leaping a bit higher, jumping a bit farther, and swinging a bit more gallantly. After watching his prey leap across an alley, the six-toed cat knew that this was a mouse that would not give up easily. But neither would he. Douglas had, in fact, just barely made the leap across the alley. Clinging to the roof's edge, she scratched and clawed and pulled herself up. Then she dusted herself off and continued on, every so often peering over the roof's edge to see if the beast was still there. It was. But on one of these occasions, she saw something else. Could it be? Down below on the sidewalk stood her friend from the cinema, the girl in the blue sweater. Douglas scampered to the corner of the rooftop and swung over the ledge. She slid down a drain pipe, then leapt to the trash can and up to a stoop post. From here, it was just a short dash up the sidewalk to the girl in the blue sweater and her cozy pocket. But before she could make her move, a meaty hand reached out and grabbed her. The meaty hand belonged to Everett Dunn. And the more the little mouse tried to wriggle free, the tighter his grip became. Everett had always wanted a pet, but he was not allowed to have one. 
A neighbor's dog followed him home one day, and another neighbor's dog followed him home the next day. After that, his mother had not allowed him to go beyond the stoop alone. As you can see, the neighbor's dogs are really not following him home. He's more pulling them home to him. <clears throat> Everett was thrilled to finally have a pet, and he hadn't had to go beyond the stoop to get it. When Henrietta Dunn returned home from a trip to the store, she was relieved to find her son Everett quietly behaving himself in the living room. Henrietta thought perhaps she had been too hard on him. After all, he only wanted a pet of his own. As she stepped into the living room, her son turned her head and smiled. <clears throat> her son turned to her and smiled. She decided then that she would find an appropriate pet for him. Some of the neighbors had mentioned having a problem with mice recently. Surely a cat would help with that. At that very moment, a giant cat leapt through her living room window and with the full force of its weight, sent her son tumbling to the ground. Hi, Pops. Once again, Douglas was flung across the room. She grabbed hold of the ceiling fan, which spun her around. And when she let go, it sent her flying out the window. She landed atop a trash can, then leapt over a railing to the sidewalk and scurried away. Across one busy intersection, then another, to an alley where she hopped and leapt and pulled herself back up onto the rooftop. Exhausted, Douglas once again collapsed in a tiny heap on the rooftop. Later, once her heart had stopped racing, she looked up to the sky Clouds floated past like giant fluffy kernels of popcorn, forever beyond her reach. With her mouth watering and stomach rumbling, Douglas curled up on the hard rooftop and into a restless sleep. Act three. Bum, bum, bum. This is, this is your intermission music. Let's go out to the kitchen. Let's go out to the kitchen. <clears throat> now back to act three of Douglas. When she awoke, Douglas was amazed to discover that the majestic cinema was closer than she could have dreamed. She hopped up to the roof's edge and gazed down below. The beast was nowhere in sight. So she hopped back down and began her triumphant march toward home. But as she darted, al as she darted along an old frayed clothesline, something caught her eye. Down below were not one, not two, but three hungry looking cats. That's right, Tim. Cat and mouse game. The sight so unsettled Douglas that she lost her footing and fell from the clothesline, grabbing a hold of the end of a stocking just in the nick of time. For a moment, she dangled high above the ground as the three cats gathered beneath her, licking their lips. Kicking her legs forward, then back, then forward, and then back again, Douglas swung 
higher and higher. Each swing brought her closer to the window above, but each swing also further unraveled the frayed clothesline. Just as she grabbed hold of the window ledge, the clothesline snapped and fell to the ground. On the other side of that very window, in an otherwise empty apartment, another mouse, another mouse sat nervously clutching a cookie crumb. Some time ago, when the mouse was just a tiny baby, he had slipped into an empty apartment underneath the door. He had followed his nose straight to a kitchen cabinet filled with long forgotten food, where day after day, he had feasted on dried beans and pasta and cookies. And each day, the mouse had grown a little bigger and a little stronger. When only one cookie crumb remained, the mouse tucked the crumb under his arm for a later treat and headed out the way he had entered. Only then did he realize that he had grown too big to slip back under the door. So the mouse had hopped onto the windowsill to look for another way out. Unfortunately, at that very moment, a terrifying monster happened to look up and see him standing in the window. The mouse had quickly jumped back down onto the floor. Later, when he hopped up onto the windowsill again, there were two monsters looking at him. And the third time he hopped up onto the windowsill, there were three. The mouse couldn't leave his apartment, but he couldn't stay either. Clutching his cookie crumb, he had sat down on the empty floor and wished for a miracle. Just then, seemingly out of nowhere, a brave looking mouse in a dashing vest appeared on the windowsill. Douglas's heart went out to the mouse sitting on the floor. She could see that he was alone and afraid, just as she had been. She would rescue this mouse in distress. Douglas leapt from window to window in search of an escape route, but there was no way up to the roof. And with the hungry looking cats patrolling down below, the sidewalk was out of the question. So Douglas sat down on the window ledge to think. That's when things went from bad to worse. The six-toed cat approached the three young cats, weary but determined. He had come too far to give up on this mouse, especially now that he had finally trapped it. But the three young cats had cornered a meal of their own and wouldn't give up on it easily. So the six-toed cat arched his back and hissed. And the three young cats hissed right back. As the cats raged on, Douglas began to lose, to lose any hope of escape. Then the big mouse leapt up on the windowsill and sat down. Douglas didn't want the mouse to see the despair in her eyes, so she looked away. There in the distance, she saw a familiar sight. Suddenly, she had a plan. Mrs. 
Mrs. Pennington caught her reflection in a store window and stopped for a moment to adjust her large hat. Then she continued on, smiling at everyone she passed. <laughs> but her smile faded as she passed a group of cats hissing angrily at one another. She turned and faced the cats to show her displeasure at their unruly behavior. The cats seemed not to even notice her. So she continued wagging her finger and telling them a thing or two. Naughty cats. What naughty cats? But then she felt a pitter-patter from above. Thinking it was beginning to rain, she turned and continued on her way, quickening her pace with, e with each step. But she didn't need to worry. She was almost to the cinema now, away from any concerns about the weather or angry cats or anything else. The six-toed cat sniffed the air as a gentle breeze blew past. It caught his attention because nowhere within it was the scent of mice. He looked up and saw an empty window where the mice had been. He looked up the street and he looked down the street, but the mice were nowhere to be found. Suddenly, he was lifted up into the air. Everett, the same child he had sent tumbling to the ground, now held him firmly. To his surprise, the six-toed cat let out a small purr. Then, just as suddenly as a six-toed cat had been scooped up by the child, the child was scooped up by his mother, and they all headed home together. We now return to the tale of Douglas. Bum, bum, bum. The next Saturday afternoon in Bloomville, Iris put on her sister's blue sweater and stepped out the front door. A familiar buttery scent wafted through the air. Popcorn. Iris headed down the steps. and made her way along the sidewalk, past the six-toed cat who was climbing onto Everett Dunn's lap and stretching his neck to show off his brand new collar, to the cinema where she bought a small pop box of popcorn from a street vendor and a ticket from the box office. Then she stepped inside. She made her way down the aisle and along the front row to her usual seat. The lights dimmed and the projector started up with a click, click, click. Iris could barely contain her excitement when Douglas leapt up onto the seat next to her with a new friend. As she watched the two mice share a kernel of popcorn, she decided to give Douglas's new friend a name. Pearl, she said aloud, thinking of her favorite actress, Pearl White. The mouse's eyes seemed to sparkle, and Iris couldn't stop smiling. Douglas wanted to return the girl's smile with a smile of her own, 
a smile that told what it felt like to be the hero of a grand adventure. And even better, to return home from that grand adventure to soft, cushiony seats and endless, fluffy popcorn. But Douglas was sleepy, so she crawled into the girl's sweater pocket and snuggled up next to Pearl. Then she fell asleep. The end. Yay! That was Douglas by Randy Cecil. Candlewick Press. And cover looks like this. Douglas by Randy Cecil. What an adorable story. That was really cute. I was impressed by that story. I thought that was adorable. I hope that you guys enjoyed Douglas by Randy Cecil. Thank you for joining me again for our live version of Storytime Sunday. Again, I apologize for all of the, um, the rewind versions, but we have so many great stories that we've already done that I just felt like some of them needed to be reshared again. That's just a little bit of a reminder. Also, the quality of our performing our shows have gotten a lot better, huh? Yay! Hooray for progress! Um, so thank you guys for joining me for Storytime Sunday. Uh, again, thank you so much to the Briar Patch for allowing me to borrow all of these wonderful books to read to you. Um, I would say every week, but the weeks that we do live shows um, and also for the weeks that we've done uh, other shows in the past. All of our books have always been borrowed by, uh, borrowed from the Briar Patch in downtown Bang or in downtown Bangor on Center Street. So thank you, Gibran and Abby and all the team over there at the Briar Patch. Also, guys, remember, check out your local uh, independent bookseller. Make sure to give them lots and lots of business this holiday season. Books are a fantastic present um, for, for kids and adults alike. So my suggestion to you is find your local independent bookseller, go in and ask for some suggestions and get some awesome books for people for, for Christmas this year. Um, I know that I'm going to do that myself. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Steve, and everybody else who has joined me this evening. As always, continue to be creative. I will see you next Sunday. Uh, we'll see if it's a live one or if it's a rewind. Regardless, be here at 8 o'clock next Sunday because you're going to get some entertainment and fun. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.